Today I'm going to be talking about nothing, or to be more precise, I'm going to be saying something about the number zero. Zero seems such an obvious idea in maths today that it's hard to imagine a time before it existed. But it's true. Zero had to be invented. The first thing we learn in maths when we're very young is how to count. One, two, three, four, and so on. Zero comes later. We might first meet it if we hear a countdown like five, four, three, two, one, zero. Or when we see it written down as the numeral after one in the number 10. Notice that these are two different things. In the first case, the countdown, zero is used as a number in its own right, the whole number that's one less than one. In the second case, in writing the number 10, it's used as a placeholder to show that there are no units in the units column. Historically, the concept of zero seems to have first appeared as a placeholder an empty place indicator in positional number systems. Clay tablets dating back to about 700 BC show that the Babylonians at that time were using symbols in the same way that we do for the idea of zero as a place marker. Various notations were used according to the city and the era, but one, two or three wedge-shaped symbols can be seen on Babylonian and Mesopotamian tablets in place of where we would put a zero. The same idea occurred later to other civilizations, including the Chinese, who left an empty space as the equivalent of zero in their counting rod system, and the Mayans. Zero as a number in itself, rather than as a placeholder, is a much more recent invention, or discovery, depending on how you look at it. The Indian scholar Pingala, who lived during the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, used the word shunya, which is Sanskrit for empty, to refer to the number zero. It was another Indian mathematician, Brahmagupta, in the 7th century, almost a thousand years after Pingala, who put the concept of zero on a firm mathematical footing. For example, he argued that the sum of zero and a negative number is negative. The sum of a positive number and zero is positive, and the sum of zero and zero is zero. These rules are all familiar to us today, as is the idea that anything times zero is zero. But with division, he ran into a problem. What happens if you divide any number by zero? It was a mystery to him. 500 years later, yet another Indian mathematician, Bhaskara, suggested that any number divided by zero is infinity. And on the face of it, that doesn't seem unreasonable. But the problem is, if you let dividing by zero equal infinity, it's possible to prove that any number equals any other number. And we can't have that. So what do mathematicians do? They don't allow division by zero. Or to put it more diplomatically, they say that it's undefined. More about zero, infinity, and everything in between in future videos. Stay tuned, and see you again soon.